So Canon sent us this to play around with. This is the RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens. It's not the first time I've used it, but it is a fun lens to go out and shoot with. And that's because there's a lot you can do with a lens like this. So that kind of got me thinking, you know what day of the week it is? Of course you do. I know what day of the week it is. And so it's time to talk about the many possibilities of a 100 to 500 millimeter lens. A lot of this is applicable for 100 to 400 as well. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put that out there. Either way though, it's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each of we each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. They're getting wild, and that's the way I like it. We're going to talk about the many possibilities of a lens just like this, the RF 100-500, so 100-500mm lens. Of course, like I said in the intro, this is applicable to 100-400 and kind of roughly, you know, a little bit longer as well. We're talking about a nice telephoto lens, right? So you could use something like a 100-400 or 100-300. There's some very, very nice lenses like that as well. But there's a lot you can do with this. It's very easy when you start looking at a lens like this to immediately think wildlife photography, sports photography. And there's a good reason for that. These are great for that kind of thing. And I have absolutely shot a lot of that kind of stuff with a lens like this. In fact, with this very lens itself. Wildlife in particular is my go-to thing with a nice long lens like this. I love the flexibility of the zoom because, you know, with a prime lens, great, beautiful image quality, but with a zoom, it is so much easier for me to actually track an animal that's moving quite quickly because I can zoom out, see it, and then zoom in to actually take the photo. Whereas with the prime, I don't have that flexibility. So I love, you know, 100 to 500 is quite a lot that's quite a lot of focal length to play around with as well. 500 mil gets you in nice and tight, nice and close to a creature or to sports or whatever it might be. And 100 mil really lets you pull back really quite far. So it's quite an impressive kind of versatile focal range that you can play with there. You can, you know, 100 mil is wide is a strong word, but it's, it's not too, you know, you can get a lot in your frame with 100 millimeters and it actually allows you to get up reasonably close as well if you want to do that rather than be further away using the 500 mil. And it's definitely worth mentioning as well because this is something I do a lot. Camera like the R5, but even something like the R6 or any kind of 24-ish megapixel camera really does still allow you the opportunity to crop in post. And I've done that loads of times. You know, if you just don't quite have the reach, 500 mil is still going to get you most of the way, almost all of the time. But if you just needed a little bit more, especially something like this, there's so much detail in the images, you can crop in. And I have no hesitation in doing that. I do that all the time. You know, like I say, not just with the R5, but with lower megapixel as well. Down to a 24 megapixel camera, or even like the R6, a little bit below that. I don't, I don't even think about hesitating. I just go for it. Do that crop, get the photo you wanted. Because the detail is there, it's absolutely fine. But wildlife and sports is absolutely not the be all and end all of a lens like this. And actually one genre that really sticks out to me is landscape photography. There is so much flexibility and so much kind of usability for a lens like this with landscape photography. That's because it really allows you to hone in on a subject. So we've talked about this in the past that actually going and taking landscape photos or really any genre of photo, you're often gonna find you take better photos when you actually identify a subject in the frame. Sometimes if you see a beautiful view, it can be easy to get carried away with that and just try and take a photo of the beautiful view, but it doesn't automatically mean it's gonna be a beautiful photo. And actually identifying a subject within that frame, within that view, and then having that as the anchor point of your photo is the number one thing that's going to improve your photography in general. And that's certainly true of landscape photography. And actually with a 100 to 500 millimeter lens, it makes it a little bit easier to hone in on a subject. That's because it forces you to really pick a subject because you're not shooting, you know, really wide. You're not taking in a whole view. You're gonna have to get in reasonably close on something in the landscape. But that can be really, really powerful. So for example, this shot of the pier, you know, I could have taken a shot of the seafront in general, but I chose to go just for the pier through the trees because that's the shot that I wanted to get. And because it's a longer lens, it allows me to really decide, right, that is the subject of the photo. Same with the lighthouse here. You know, I framed it up with the landscape around, but it's, that's the subject of the photo. It gives an anchor point to the photo, it makes the viewer much more comfortable when viewing the photo. It gives them a place for their eyes to naturally rest. And once you've identified a subject in your photo, you then build a composition around that, whether it is framing it up, like in this photo, 
or whether you want to you know use the rule of thirds or maybe try and get some symmetry going whatever it might be you can really start to think about your composition once you know what the subject is and that is something that a lens like this really helps you to excel at in fact i'd actually go so far as to say that i often prefer taking landscape photos with a lens like this than with a really wide lens because for me it's just it's just all about that subject and really identifying that and i just find it so much easier with a longer lens because it just forces me to do it i have no option i can't think about a big wide view i can't think about a big open sky those are beautiful ways of taking photos as well but this is a it's a very interesting way of doing it and of course it's not just that either you could talk about things like portrait photography now i know you're thinking a 100 to 500 millimeter lens probably not the first lens you think of when it comes to portrait photography but actually you can get some really interesting stuff with a lens like this now we've talked about this before in the past with other kind of focal lengths 150 to 600 100 to 400 and it's essentially the same kind of thing here the lens compression is going to really allow you to get a nice blurred background to your photo you're going to have a huge amount of control over the background because of how long the focal length is even if you're shooting at 100 millimeters just moving a little bit to the left or the right will change what's going to be actually in the frame in the background so you have a huge amount of control over what's actually going to appear in the photo to begin with with, which is really important you can really place your subject in a very specific spot so whether that's for lighting reasons or for that background reason just moving a little bit can make a huge difference with a lens like this because it's so long and you've got so much lens compression it also brings that background much closer it makes it feel much much closer to the subject in that kind of sense and, and that can be really powerful as well so while this isn't necessarily my first choice for portraits which would probably be an 85 mil or a 50 mil i'm feeling 50 mils at the moment i'm really i'm really enjoying a 50 mil this definitely allows you to capture some really interesting portraits something a little bit different and whether you're shooting at 100 mil or 500 mil you know or anywhere in between of course you're going to get some nice bokeh nice out of focus elements to your photo and a really really interesting and different end result now i wouldn't take this to do you know corporate headshots but certainly out and about you know if you're going out on a, on a trip then you can absolutely expect to be able to, yes, get wildlife photos, maybe that's the purpose, but landscape, no problem, portrait, no problem. You can absolutely get all kinds of different things with a lens like this. Now, you could also take this in other directions, something maybe a little bit more advanced, like astrophotography. When I think of astrophotography, I tend to go for a very wide lens because I want to capture as much of the sky as possible and, I, you know, it makes it a little bit easier to avoid those kind of star smudges, the little streaks as they move across the sky. But with a lens like this, you can really do some interesting stuff like absolutely zoom in and get a closer shot of something like the moon which is a really interesting experience to go and shoot yes it's a little bit more tricky yes you have to think about things a little bit differently but it's something to try if you've got a lens like this in your bag there is a lot more to a lens like this than just wildlife and sports yes it excels at those and absolutely those are the first genres i think about when I pick up a lens like this. And when Canon actually sent us this lens to, to kind of play around with, those are the things I thought about going out and doing, but there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more you can do with something like this. And like I say, that goes for 100 to 400, 100 to 300, you know, 150 to 600, all kinds of different long telephoto focal lengths like that, where you've got a nice big zoom range to play around with. There's a lot of versatility in that and a lot of flexibility, not just while taking those wildlife shots, which I do really appreciate, but actually in the kinds of shots you can get. And that's, that's a lot of fun and actually you could come away with a new favorite landscape lens as an example now you can check out this lens and a bunch of other lenses that we used for all these kinds of photos down in the description they're all down there to go and check out along with the r5 and all the kit we use for these videos as well it's all down there in the description don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new stuff all the time i'll see you next time but until then as always thanks for watching